Happy days. We've got our Tucana teardrop camper and we're about to head out bush and go off grid. So, how does our electrical system work? Come with me and we'll find out. This video is being done in conjunction with Tucana Teardrop Campers made by Stonegate Industries. Hopefully you'll get something from it. To be clear, I'm not being paid to do this, I'm simply doing it because I love making these kind of productions. In later videos, we hope to have more interesting content for you, so please, by all means, subscribe. Or, if you like this video, press the like button. We'll have other interesting stories for sure. Let's talk about the complete system here. As you can see in the diagram, you have your solar panels or photovoltaic cells here, solar controller in the middle, you have your inverter over here, battery or battery bank there, your charger, which could also be part of the inverter. You also have your Anderson plug, Coming off the battery bank, you have your source load, which goes to your fridge, lights and fans. Coming in, you may have, or you should have, your 240 volt in plug, which you connect to your um, source, such as your caravan park uh, outlet or at home through a 15 amp outlet, or a gen set, and that would come around to your charger. And by the way, the charger could be incorporated in the inverter, but for the diagram's sake, let's just put it to the side. So your charger, which then would come back around into your battery bank. Right, your sun. It provides the energy through the solar rays, comes to your solar panels, gets converted to voltage. Your solar controller controls that voltage to bring it down and regulate it so that it goes into your battery bank without burning out your batteries. Your battery bank, in turn, can feed directly through 12 volts to your fridge, lights and fans, etc. Or also into your inverter, which then converts it into 240 volts out to the plugs that are in your camper. Your charger takes 240 volts, converts it back to 12 volts, or more than 12 volts, like 13 or 14 volts, to pump back into your battery bank. Right, the Tucana camper. Your solar cells that are on the top of the uh, van. I have four 50 watt panels. You might only have three. If you have a standard camper, I know they come out with just three um, solar panels, which means that you've got 150 watts. I have 200 watts. That doesn't mean you're going to get 200 watts of power out of those solar panels. That's just their rating. I can tell you now there is never a moment that's going to exist on a clear sunny day sky that I would get 200 watts out of those panels. The most I'm likely to ever get out of that is about 180 watts. So never think that whatever capacity you got there on the roof of your camper is going to provide you that power. That's just their maximum capable rating. What varies with that is the sun angle to the solar panels. So the sun hitting on a diagonal is going to create less voltage. If it's hitting directly adjacent to that panel, it would create the maximum. But as you realize, you know, you've got a curved roof, so it's never going to be adjacent at any given time to the whole solar panel. Your solar controller, in our case, is a PWM controller. That stands for Pulse Width Modulation. They are not the most expensive controllers. They do the job. You can get 
different controllers and change it out to what they call an MPPT type controller, which is your maximum power point tracking type. They're a lot more expensive and a little bit more efficient. You probably could get up to maximum 20% better efficiency by using one of those controllers. However, unlikely here in Australia. You'd most likely get very similar in these sunny conditions that we have in throughout Australia really. So I wouldn't bother spending your money changing out your controller. We're going to talk in more depth about the controller and there's a link down below to that discussion, to that episode, and it'll give you more information on how that works. Moving right along, the inverter. We have in my um, Tucana a Victron inverter. You may have an earlier model and even have a C-Trek, C-Tech I think it is, or could be even one of the original models. So more on that later, but I will be talking about more of mine also in an episode down below in the link. Your battery bank. Some of you have one single battery. Um, I've heard people talking about a 130 amp battery. I have two 100 amp hour AGM batteries. The standard battery that are put in the Tucanas are AGM batteries. I know a few of you out there are now putting your lithium ion batteries in there. And the argument there is that they're lighter, more powerful, and they seem to be. They almost have about double the capacity, say, than the AGM type batteries. But you pay the price. Having said that, if space is a concern and also the fact that they are lighter, then it may be worthwhile deciding when your batteries are uh, discharged and no longer worthwhile to change up to those because they have a, a much longer recycle ability. In other words, uh, they'll have uh, recycled say 2,000 times of charge discharge compared to 500 times for the AGM batteries. So really effectively you've got four times the life out of your lithium ion batteries. The ones that I've heard talked about on the channel in the Facebook, sorry, are the iTech uh, 120, which apparently are equal to 100, uh, sorry, 200 amp hour batteries. So maybe later on when my batteries wear out, I'll be looking at upgrading for those as well. Moving along to the Anderson plug. Another great way of getting extra power or to be more off grid and stay longer off grid is to use an additional solar blanket or solar panels attached to your Anderson plug. There's been a little bit of talk on Facebook um, page about the not being able to connect directly to the Anderson plug, but that's actually not the fact. You can plug directly into this if your solar blanket or solar panels also has its own solar controller. The two will not interfere with each other they'll both go about charging up your battery bank. So you can do that. And it's a great way of using the uh, camper off-grid and getting more power to sustain yourself while you're out camping. We had another one of our owners of the Tucana campers the other day talking about using the um, inverter and the toaster to cook up uh, some toast in the back and uh, that's a big no-no I'm afraid really all your inverter is going to be good for is simple things like charging up laptops um, say a drill pack you know a um, cordless drill um, things like that your phones small power items you are not going to be able to have huge loads on this so anything that involves major heating such as, well, for instance, the toaster, you can't use it for, or an electric frying pan, no, it's a no-go. Stick to the gas, and that's why we have gas back there, because that's an easy energy uh, item to, to make toast. You can buy toaster, toasters to cook on the gas flame, 
uh, I'd stick with those. Just remember your inverter is not going to be able to power the air conditioner in this case all night long example. So small power items only. The only way you can really do that and um, effectively with a toaster etc would be to be in a uh, caravan park hooked up to uh, a connect uh, short to land connection power or you could use a generator of course down here. So really what would you do? How do you know when you're going off grid what to take with you? Well for me it depends on where I'm going, how long I'm going to be away. Like if it's just a weekend <clears throat> your battery bank and your solar panels are going to be plenty. If I'm going for a week or so I take my genset so that I can bring up the batteries quickly if I need to. Also, please leave a comment. I do like to read them and maybe I can learn something from you as well. I mean, hey, we're all in this together to learn and get out there and enjoy ourselves. Catch around.